안녕하세요. 저는 어, 현재 그 국립환경대학교에 교수로 있고요. 아시아문 네트워크 어, 코리아의 그 현장으로 있습니다. 오늘 이렇게 발표할 수 있는 기회를 주셔서 대단히 감사드립니다. My talk is related to uh, brain mobility and capacity building in science and technology innovation. I also like to express my sincere thanks for uh, having a good uh, opportunity at the ninth Asia Korea Conference on Science and Technology. The, my uh, talk will be related to special session track one, AKS 2021 Forum and Networking for Foreign Student Alumni from Southeast, Southeast Asia and India. Uh, for that, I got uh, uh, several small titles like uh, Science for a Sustainable Future, Global Network Platform Innovation, and Talent Mobility, and others. Uh, let me start the uh, first slide of our Science for a Sustainable Future. The UN Secretary General, Mr. Pan, former Secretary General of the UN, he created a Science Advisory Board of the UN Secretary uh, UN Secretary General, and it's strengthening the interface between science and policy so that the latest scientific finding are affected in a high level policy discussion in UNESCO, holds the science secretary of the board. The UNESCO uh, works is to assist the country and invest science technology innovation and also develop uh, national science policies. You can read, you can find this, and also the UN. The UN has open knowledge platform. Now, according to the scheme of the UN's open knowledge platform, it suggests like uh, openness, corporate funding, and scientific cooperation, coordination, and triangular collaboration. With that, efficiency of utilizing limited resources, sustainable social economic development, and responsible global challenges are achievable. The UN has 17 SDGs, and with the four SDGs achievement, uh, we need the international partnership and co-creations. I would just want to uh, give you one uh, terminology of the science diplomacy. Uh, you can see, as you can see this slide, science diplomacy is and science and technology cooperation is one of the most effective ways of influencing, assisting other nations and creating real bridges between the one country like Korea and counterpart. Uh, here the definition, but uh, I will just simply skip it. Uh, Asian Community Vision 2025, the Asian leaders uh, in 2013, they developed a post-2015 vision to realize politically cohesive, economically integrated and socially responsible and truly people-oriented, people-centered and rule-based ASEAN communities. For that, uh, a sustainable infrastructure and people's mobility is one of uh, several agendas for that. Uh, there's one example by Japanese. Japanese case of how they uh, develop international partnership for addressing the global and local challenges, like a government institution, and government ministry, and universities and private sector, and they are working together. Uh, uh, related to the global partnership and the science diplomacy, there are two examples of non-profit and non-government organization. First example is Asian Research Network, uh, uh, initiated by uh, by me and together with the Japanese Prime Minister Rick, Pri Premium Institution Rick Yen. Um, and then uh, we have uh, several agendas, such as like establishment of each and R&D network, capacity building and innovation, promotion of collaborative research and conducting R&D project, and training and securing talent individuals. 
And this is the establishment of the new Asian R&D culture by securing talented R&D researcher and also exchanging student and uh, many postdocs and uh, uh, researcher. The ARN's vision and missions are networking, integrating Asian SNT, and building forward-looking partnership through science diplomacy, uh, developing Asian SNT through cooperation education, and proceeding global competitiveness in ARN in uh, uh, strategic programs. Uh, another uh, organization is ANSO. It's first a comprehensive innovation science organization uh, by, by Chinese academic sciences. And it is a non profit and non government innovation organization with independent legal status. The general principles are joint concert, consultation and the joint effort and the joint benefit uh, to solve common challenges. Uh, many activities are uh, actually this year in 2019 I involved. Uh, one is uh, the beauty of life, uh, beauty of life in Earth on Earth. Uh, it, it was held uh, this August 2021, and this one I give invited talk. The title was Science Diplomacy and uh, Talent Mobility. And so, uh, I want to just introduce. It's inspiration and uh, imagination and goes to uh, innovation. As you know very well about the Wright brothers who invented the first airplane at the time glider in 2000, 1901, about 120 years ago, the Wright brothers invented like uh, the glider we call the early, early uh, like uh, the model of airplane. Uh, so he uh, finally, at the time after trial and error, uh, his airplane glider can fly, could fly like a 389 feet at the time. Uh, with his uh, inspiration, image, imagination, and experiment, uh, many people during like hundred more than hundred years finally, uh, with a continuous and sharp innovation. The human being developed a space shuttle and a space aircraft and finally uh, launched to the moon. This is a kind of a continuous and disruptive innovation. For the innovation and continuously, let me just look at some statistics issued by OECD. Just uh, you know, last year, OECD released R&D intensity in OECD country and selected economies. Uh, Israel uh, ranked number one uh, by spending GDP almost 5.0, followed by Korea about 4.6, and OECD country about 2.4, and the US a little bit more, and China and other countries followed by, you know, the, uh, the like uh, maybe 20s or 18s ranking. Uh, we have another uh, the interesting uh, data issued by Bloomberg every year. From 2014, Korea amazingly ranked number one as the most innovative country in the world. Here is one slide, 2017, Korea ranked number one and followed by Sweden. Singapore ranked number six. In 2018, Korea again still ranked number one, and uh, Singapore jumped from number six to number three uh, in 2018. Of course, Bloomberg has many index such as like uh, productivity, high tech density, manufacturing, value added, like and many other research concentration, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And uh, again, uh, 2000. 21 this year, Korea again, number one ranking, Singapore number two ranking, and uh, here uh, Switzerland and number three ranking, followed by fourth ranking in Germany. So Korea somehow still by Bloomberg parameters, 
Korea ranked continuously at number one. However, there is another like uh, index, like a global index, innovative, innovative index uh, uh, by WIPO, we call World Intellectual Property Organization. Korea in that WIPO global index this year, Korea ranked number fifth. So fifth ranking, number one is Swiss, uh, number two, Sweden, number three, US, and number four, the UK. And Singapore, number eight. And uh, based on the, the innovative parameters, uh, there are four categories. One is high income group, uh, second is upper middle income group, lower middle income group, the lastly, low income group. Korea was uh, belonging to high income group and Korea uh, number fifth ranking in there in overall and also in high income group. China number one in middle high income group. Uh, now let me just uh, change the gear uh, from just a uh, you know, the global index, but what about real Korea manufacturing capabilities? Innovation, it's key issue for Korea manufacturing company. The manufacturing has been the key driver of Korea's economic growth for a long time, as you can see from this, you know, diagram. Korea uh, GDP share by manufacturing is almost 30, continuously about or uh, more than 10 years after, you know, past global, uh, the explosive growth, present, very, you know, steady. But what about the future? Maybe revitalizing manufacturing capability in Korea must be together with the smart industry, such as manufacturing plus ICT knowledge. Right. The evolution of a smart era is coming, already come. So Korea should develop smart industry based on strong manufacturing in the future, like uh, smart industry by combination of convergence and ICT in smart era, present and the future, make, you know, expanding the sharing of the GDP by smart industry in the near future. For smart industry, I want to just take two examples. One about the marine industry, the other one is the semiconductor industry. First, about semiconductor industry. You know that Samsung, SK, Hynix, Intel, and TSMC in Taiwan. The roadmap of semiconductor devices is following. Like uh, 2025, we expect about two nanometers, like, uh, you know, uh, the, like a, a node and a gap, especially semiconductor devices, giant rule. And for that, uh, we need a highly advanced lithography, such as like uh, UV machine. Currently, we are using argon Friday emergent lithography, but the uh, UV machine will be heavily depending on for like a uh, next generation of semiconductor device manufacturing. Like, uh, you know, to, after 20, 20 second, 22, even 2030 20, and 2040, beyond the CMOS, uh, we are expecting quantum computing or currently now new, recently developed like a neuromorphic computing or molecular electron. It is kind of a device for them. Currently by semiconductor market share by innovation, uh, by also uh, by many other countries, United States, South Korea, Korea, Taiwan, and China. Uh, for two different uh, business models, one is integrated device manufacturing model, we call IDM, and the family's foundry model. And uh, the United States in both two and upper in a diagram, they, they are uh, overwhelming more than 50% and the Korea in case the Samsung and the highness following in the first uh, like IDM. But uh, for found like foundry case, like here you can see 
uh, Taiwan, Taiwan and uh, almost even, you know, uh, like uh, we call uh, OSAT, we call outsourced semiconductor assembling test. Also Taiwan overwhelmingly in all of these uh, three. So because Taiwan and Korea, they are two competing countries in semiconductors. Uh, luckily, Samsung will announce uh, with a new technology we call three nanometer or two nanometer class process gate all around GAA transistors. Yeah, GAA transistors by Samsung. And hopefully Samsung may again take leadership for semiconductor in foundry and also like um, normal. The, uh, like a TM, you know, uh, ran, uh, like a TM fabrication. Another another case is the marine industry of Korea. Korea is making huge investment in digitalization, decarbonization across the marine sector for shipbuilding, port, and offshore energy. Even Korea population only 51 million people. Korea, the country is already a global leader in shipbuilding and investing like uh, you know, billions of euro in eco-friendly eco smart ship technology, an effort to stay ahead of their regional rivals such as China and Japan. The Korea's shipbuilding industry already maintaining top position worldwide in new order for three straight months to the, up to July, even uh, just uh, on uh, even September, Korea sharing about uh, 40 price, 45 percent, and the China about uh, 44 percent, almost equally, and uh, Japan about 10 percent. However, uh, Korea should a one uh, more than 65 percent global order these days for high value added ships, and uh, more than 70 percent of green vessels. Uh, because of by achieving innovation in technology and production and management. Uh, this is one showcase of like, uh, you know, offshore, uh, offshore wreck of drilling wreck, uh, <coughs> manufacturing by Korea and delivered to Sweden, uh, just uh, Norway, I'm sorry, last year. Hosko also doing, Hosko uh, is a the giant steering company in the world. Postcode Smart Factory is an intelligent pl plant that is optimized and controlled based on predictive operation condition by IoT technology. I want to just take another example um, for Singapore, especially by Nanyang Te Technological Universities. And Nanyang Te Technological University and Q is leading University in, in in the world and by collaboration with uh, like um, <clears throat> by Munen and also by uh, also Etel and uh, East Berkeley and Cambridge by you know innovate by innovating idea to assemble and to establish a kind of campus, a special campus for research excellence and technology enterprise. Uh, for doing so, we need a kind of connectivity, a land mobility exchange program. Why the, we need a connectivity? Because global talent require urgent solution. For that, we need a super high connectivity to take, a, to take like a partnership for innovation and also opportunity only cannot be fully realized without intricate effort of industry, academia, and public agency. For that, we need a great connectivity. As I said, like uh, here, it is a good example by NTU with a certain great connectivity with many foreign institutions. Uh, there are uh, two problems in Europe and in <clears throat> Asia. Asia. One is like uh, Erasmus program. It's already more than 30 years. A very successful story for science and engineers, uh, especially 
partnership and exchange program for European country, not only in inside the Europe, also out to outgoing to Asian or the other like uh, North America. Uh, in Asia, we have another program which is called the uh, Campus Asia program. Campus Asia is called Collective Action for Mobility Program of University Students in Asia. So to go global in education by Asian community, especially uh, by some meeting of Korea, Japan, China in 2010, three countries agreed to make this new program in order to strengthen the network among uh, a, a academic institution of higher education in Asia and to promote student exchange through the joint and double degree program. program. This is one example of like a campus program. Example case, PDK, uh, Campus Asia Consortium, like uh, here, uh, Tsinghua University, Kaist, and Tokyo Tech, or three country. And uh, uh, this country by uh, 2021 case world university ranking, Tsinghua 15th ranking, Kaist 39 ranking, and Tokyo Tech 56 ranking. It's a good example for collaboration as a good partner. And uh, he's a leader in the Pop Sahara at Tokyo Tech. He also mentioned that the country uh, with whom we share cultural similarity is a way to deepen our joint understanding and, com and uh, cooperate relation uh, relationship. In this way, uh, three countries can further promote development of uh, three countries at the end, the development of the world. Okay, uh, I talk about Asian Research Network, ARN. Uh, from now on, I just uh, speed up for showing some photos. The ARN, uh, together with Rikin and many institutions, we established and then finally we got a platform uh, and in, in Hanyang University by building the network and the uh, building itself, uh, sponsored by Samsung and uh, Seoul Metropolitan and Hanyang University. This is a, uh, uh, we call the grand opening ceremony of Fusion Tech Center as a home of the Asia Research Network. Uh, the the ARN, ARN Korea was headquarter is located in Fusion Tech Center at Hanyang University campus. And this is a uh, photo of the uh, opening ceremony. And one year later, 2000, 2000 I'm sorry, one, one year later, uh, Asodaro, Prime Minister, also came uh, to visit uh, Rikin and ARN. And uh, he is uh, Asodaro. And the uh, campus is uh, not only Campus Asia program, we are also linked to Asia, Asian Research Network summer camp sometime, uh, whether in uh, Japan or Korea, we are hosting that uh, ARN summer camp. And students come and attend and change the idea and get together and make good friendship and program will be continuously, either in Japan and Korea, even Singapore. And also the ARN also organized uh, like a STI forum. And the 2014 first Korea ASEAN SCI forum was held uh, by inviting like uh, uh, 15 countries in Busan, I'm sorry, in Daejeon. And uh, this country, uh, this uh, uh, countries, uh, many countries came and we talked and we had a meeting and also the like round the table meeting with a certain agenda we discuss and finally we make a kind of recommendation for like each country, especially for relevant ministry, may, may develop the approved mechanisms to facilitate the efficient effective implement, uh, implementation of proposed initiative. And also 2015 and 2016, uh, continuously holding 
uh, hosting and holding this STA forum. In 2017, in Pohang also continuously making this. But this is all related to science diplomacy and the global partnership and also the human exchange. Many scientists even, many different people from different sectors, they come and talk. And another example of this, like a trilateral SNT cooperation dialogue organized by trilateral, com, trilateral, uh, uh, trilateral cooperation secretaries by Minister of Foreign Affairs for three countries, located in Seoul. And uh, I and the sample of people like uh, Professor Hana from Japan side, we've been involving for promotion. Not only for that, also three country trilateral nanotech cooperation promotion. Uh, also, we are doing it as a good model case. How we can do together with not uh, only a student and research level for one like in energy for three, three countries. For that also uh, expansion to global view from trilateral uh, nanotech cooperation in Mexico and to the high level for global and technology platform initiative. And also a little bit in you know, a different scale of you know, com com uh, conferences and the meeting. Asia Nano conferences has been hosted and by three country. And this is also a good case how three country and uh, with the Asian country work together as a model case for partnership and also knowing each other and promotion at the upper level, hopefully sometime uh, like a link to like a China, Japan, Korea, nanotech uh, cooperation platform initiative. And uh, this conference could be held every two years continuously, even almost 20 years has been continued. And uh, 2022 HR Nano conference will be held in Busan. Hopefully many people may come to share the idea and work together. Uh, as always a partnership and for science diplomacy, and also as a part of this uh, scientist in among, among the three country. I was lucky to visit Beijing the last three months this year from July until September. I gave lectures in various institutions, in Nano Center, Graphic Institute, Tsinghua University, and many other institutions. So the finally, the final slide is following. There are several suggestions. As I talk, in the Asian level and global scale, namely talent mobility, is to envision the future of Asian strengths in science and technology. For instance, like uh, scholarship, some research consortia, those are good examples. And not only Asian network platform, and also we may, you know, you may just, uh, you know, consider Global nanotech, uh, global network platform, uh, you know, in a near future, and the uh, human centers, and the only science model innovation or business model innovation, as well as technology innovation. So cooperation for joint R and D, human resources development, innovation to create a job, innovate platform for, you know. This many, uh, like uh, this many, this, this, this disseminating the fourth industrial revolution. I hope the my talk is related to innovation and human network related to mobility. It is not for only for us. It is for Asian people. Hopefully, for global concept. We may work together and to make our dream come true. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.